everybody, and welcome to the Angry Beavers. No, stop. No. Uh, that was my Envirothon team. In high school. In, in high, high school. school. Yes. Right. We were all girls, and no one told us it was bad. The end. We're off to a great the start. Yes. This is a great the start. The, we, the angry Beavers are story. not bad. Molly. Sitting here in the cozy nut together. Previously uh, on Angry Beavers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the aggro nut. <laughs> the Waffle Crew went to an auction and stole the Stone of Golar before it could be auctioned off. And then they word of recalled back to their house and promptly found themselves at odds with various servants of auctioneers who feel like they were cheated. Various indeed. Um, yes, so the Zentarum is represented. The Castellanters are represented, and even Jarlaxle's Bragg and Darth, uh, Drow, are represented as they all attacked the Waffle House at once. Oh, and um, we ended last week's session by uh, having just about everybody who's anybody uh, fighting on the first and second floors, arrows coming magically through the walls of the Waffle House struck Dieth, but struck Paulton even harder, taking him down. Um, actually, no, it wasn't, was it the arrows that took you down or was it the imps? I don't know, man. It was a lot. It was uh, anyway, imps. yeah, it was the imps. It was, it the, was the, the arrows were bad. The arrows hurt a lot, but the imps had their poison. Paulton hit the floor um, in the upstairs hallway, followed soon thereafter by his son, Simon, who was also stung by the imps after bashing one of their little heads up against a wall. Evelyn is doing a perpetual dance, having had a, oh, spell, yeah. having had a spell cast upon her last week that forced her to do the morning lord of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that and it made me laugh and spill tea on me. <laughs> Strix, Diath, and the Black Viper are all downstairs with the kids fighting drow. And the last thing that happened was a bunch of rubbery black tentacles erupted from the floor of the tap room, basically almost filling the entire room, threatening to uh, wrap everyone up in their clutches. Okay, so, for, okay. Sister Narai. Oh, that's me. Hi. You are not there. Nope. You left this uh, giant statue with buildings built atop it and started running through the streets. Uh, yes. In the middle of the so. night, heading to the Waffle House, and you don't have to make any sort of check to know. Sorry, I'm just getting my bearings here. Where is the God Catcher? There it is. So you are one, two, three, four, five, about six blocks away from Troll Skull Alley uh, when you leave the God Catcher. And when you get now, the fastest way to get there is just to charge down Jolthoon Street, heading east, until you get to the high road. Then follow the high road north to Del Zorin Street. Okay. But when you get to the high road, and you're expecting this being the middle of the night, there shouldn't be too much activity in the city. Yeah, I'm going to run crosswalks. Um, you realize that there is a night parade. Um, basically filling up the high road. Nice. Uh, making its way slowly northward. And you can see that there are colorfully dressed individuals in the parade, some of them on stilts, uh, at least one of them riding what looks like a white ox. Uh, you can see jugglers, you can see torch jugglers, and uh, you can see very scantily clad men and women with sequined outfits and leashes with various animals that they're pulling behind them, including exotic beasts such as camels and other things that you haven't really seen before in this part of the world. And on top of that, you can see that there are crowds gathering all along the sides of the road with drinks and beverages. Um, yeah. So it's Pride or Carnival. It's, it could be all of the above. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So if the... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what... All right, so it's basically it's blocking the way. It is. Now, someone of your abilities with your, your stealth and whatnot could probably slip through the menagerie to get across the street. 
if yeah, you so wished. I would totally be down to uh, shroll for that if I should be doing that. If I absolutely, should, I will wait for a for a gap in the parade where there aren't too many things that could trample me. Okay. Um, and then Narai will try and dart into the uh, into the midst of the parade while you know in preferably around something that will draw interest rather than the small dark figure. Yep. And you can, right. yeah, you sort of, sort of weaving through, there are some people, uh, dancers, basically twirling around. Um, some of them are carrying swords, so you're a little bit worried about that, but you sort of duck around them. Past... I, ain't, I ain't worried about nothing, because your boy just rolled a nat 20. On what skill did you roll? That was going to be, it was going to be a, it was going to be a stealth check. Oh, okay. Hopefully. Or unless you wanted me to roll for acrobatics or for athletics or what do you? Um, for? Basically, I was just going to have you do either athletics or acrobatics to cut through the crowd. Oh, okay. Well, my bonus to acrobatics is the same. So okay. I rolled a nat twenty, and I can we can make great. an acrobatics. Great. No, nope, that's great. If you're okay with that. Yep. Okay. Um, but are you trying to be stealthy, or do you care? I would prefer to not not get a ton of uh, not get a ton okay. of attention, but I think that my first thing is not getting trampled. Which Got is it. Why it's acrobatics. Yeah, and. Uh, you're you're easily able to avoid getting trampled, and uh, there's all these dancers and clowns and f people on stilts and some people on stilts blowing horns, uh, uh, party horns basically. And then you manage to get to the other side, no problem. And it's at that time that you start to see the crowd. It's all um, all the nightlife of Waterdeep has come out to see this, and this is kind of the upper part of the city. So a lot of the people you see are fairly well dressed. Um, they can take care of e themselves. You also okay. see that all of the city watch is basically out in force to watch and shepherd the parade to make sure everything goes smoothly. And that's somewhat striking to you given how close you are to the Waffle House and the danger you think you might find there. Yeah, uh, okay. That. Um... It's almost like somebody planned this. Yes, I was just about to say. Boy, how suspicious, how sus. Uh, well, um, having noted that, uh, okay. So, quick question beforehand, because my my Forgotten Realms versing is not quite as is not quite as in depth as possibly the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Is are the Gentrum an illegal organization? And or like, or, or are no. they kind of operating under the auspices of? They whatever? have they have legitimate uh, business. They do. Super. They they carry out their business in sometimes shady ways, but they're they're the the Zentarum as they are found here, are basically um, on the up and up. Yakuza ish. Yeah, a little bit, a little uh, bit. Cool. Okay. Well, good to know. Um, do they have a float in the parade? Uh, there is a float, and you can see it's got a mechanical dragon on the back of awesome. it, rearing That's its head great. and just letting out little gouts of flame. Nothing, cool. nothing terribly impressive, although the float itself is quite a mechanical accomplishment. Normal-ish. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, in that case, um, you can I also might... see You can also see a big flump balloon behind it. Oh, I love flumps. Yep. Well, Brooks loves flumps. I feel like Nurai would be determinedly indifferent. <laughs> um, I, okay. So, so do I, can I do a quick perception to see uh, if there are anyone around here who looks like maybe a lower level officer or somebody who doesn't look like any sheriff or anything maybe just yeah you don't have to make a check you can find a constable perfect i'll just pull i'll just head up to a constable and say um pardon me sir it sure does look like there's a lot of police out tonight are you not expecting anything else to happen uh he he just leans over and says what do you mean nothing else here in Waterdeep? There's always something happening in Waterdeep. Of course, which is why I'm surprised to see this many of you constables well, monitoring. This I wasn't mean, this wasn't planned, if that's what you mean. The this parade wasn't planned. No. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, the unplanned all... parades of Waterdeep. Yes, those. Uh, so to celebrate us, no kidding. <laughs> all of these people built floats and didn't tell anyone. Well, no, this is the Sea Maidens Fair. Oh, they have, do I know what that is? Uh, yes, you do. It is, it is a seafaring carnival that visits coastal cities in boats, unpacks their shit on the docks, and then parades around the cities. Um, 
But he tells you that the Sea Maidens Fair, we, we have schedules of when they're supposed to do this kind of thing. Apparently, right. there was some sort of confusion tonight. I don't know what's up. Oh, okay. But anyway, we're all getting paid to be here, so I'm not complaining. All getting paid. Very well. Uh, who's and, and you're so you're saying that that the, the the precinct is paying you, obviously. Yeah, we're all getting a little um, bit of, a little bit of extra coin in our pouches tonight. Of course, of course, of course. Sensible. Uh, very well. And how how long do you imagine that this parade is going to go on and all? Well, eventually they're going to get to the end of the high road, and then I'm not sure where they're going to go. Um, they might come back this way. So you're basically booked for the whole night, then? I don't know. Maybe. Marvelous. Um, it's uh, in that uh, well, better, better than hauling better than hauling drunks out of back alleys. No kidding. Although I'm sure there'll be plenty of that for the people who take the shift after yours. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll nod to them and say. Thanks for the information, and I hope there's, that your night is as peaceful as is reasonable. Under there's the a big, there's a, uh, a clown sort of uh, comes over to you and uh, pulls out of his sleeve a bouquet of flowers and hands them to you. Oh, my God. There could have been so many ways that sentence could have ended. Um, I, uh, I will, I will gently, gently hold a hand up and say, uh, no, thank you, please, uh, and I'll gesture to the constable. I'll say, as in, like, please, clown, give him the flowers. Uh, the constable just waves the clown off. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look at the constable and say, <laughs> fear of clowns, sorry. And uh, the clown will just throw the bouquet up in the air and tumble, tumble off with a cartwheel. Oh, man, I'm so paranoid. Okay, good to know. Um, I will, uh, I, uh, Narai is going to head off into the darkness. Okay. Uh, toward toward the the Waffle House, um, right. and toward the street, the house across the street from the Waffle House, more specifically. All right, uh, make a perception check as you withdraw down uh, a darkened street. Thirteen. Okay. Dancing Evelyn, you are upstairs on the second floor in the kids' guest room, aka Strix's panic room, dancing. Uh, you heard, you heard, uh, you can hear the fracas in the level below, Strix and Dieth and the kids, uh, but out in the hall, uh, you also heard a ruckus and then something heavy hit the floor. At the end of your turn, you're going to get a saving throw to break this spell. At the end of my turn? Yeah, the, the new save comes at the end of your turn. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can't move, but is there anything you want to do before you make that saving throw? I can attack. True. Right. And there's currently there's no one in the room with you, and you have no line of sight to anyone. And I was, I was in concentration with my sunbeam spell. Yes, you still have that up. Sick. Okay, and. Um, where I am, I heard this commotion downstairs, mm -hmm. you said. Yes. Am I currently above the commotion? Um, you are directly above the, let me just double check to make sure I've got this right. Dude, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. You are directly above the pantry behind the bar. Sick. So if I, okay, another question. Mm -hmm. um, I have movement and an attack even though I'm under this spell, theoretically, even though I can't stop dancing, right? Um, let's see. You begin a comic dance in place. Uh, well, what I mean is, a dancing creature must use all its movement to dance without leaving its space. Ah. And has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls. So something like a misty step wouldn't work. Well, if you misty stepped, then that would work. You would just be dancing in the new space. And would that count as my action or my movement? That is a, a, mi nice. a misty step is a bonus action, is it not? Yeah, that's a bonus action. I mean, yeah, that's a bonus it, doesn't, action. it doesn't eat into your movement. Correct. 
unless it unless it's yeah because because misty step action. is a bonus action you can use that you're not technically even though you're changing your posi your place on the battlefield you are not technically moving as far as right. the rules are concerned and misty step has to be to somewhere i can see though that is correct also, it doesn't say this in the book, uh, but the music you're dancing to is Technotronic. <laughs> I was pretty sure it was like... Pump up the jam. <laughs> I don't know how I'm dancing like um, Celtic right, River Dance to Technotronic. Done this beforehand. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It has to be a place it's that you can see. I mean, it could be a techno remix of River Dance. I don't know. Currently, the only I'm place... In. I'm in for this. Currently, the only place you can see is either outside through one of the windows or the hall, which hasn't... You've got an open door between you and the hall outside um, on this floor but you can't see the level below you. Okay. I, Evelyn is going to hear this commotion, turn her ax downward, mm -hmm. and go <clears throat> and shoot the floor. Okay, uh, roll your damage against this five foot square of wooden flooring. I'm double checking my damage. Her poor house. It's, it's, <laughs> You know, it's not a house running, anymore. Et I mean, it's just a Zort. It's a... I'm just waiting for like the chicken run ending where just the front of the house just goes. <laughs> oh, you know he's gonna do that now. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'm using it two handed. Okay. So that's a D10. Oh, this is a case where you're not you're not actually striking the floor. With your weapon, you're just sunbeaming through. Oh, that's right, sunbeam. So it's just yeah. the sunbeam. I need the sunbeam smell. Sorry, I was. Yeah, and so. Um, Looking it up, sunbeam. That will be six d eight. Oh yeah. Okay. And the floor is blinded. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is radiant damage. Mm -hmm. Floor is not immune to radiant damage. Twenty-eight. All right. Yeah. So you blast through the floor. Your radiant energy just burns away uh, the wood, and you create a blackened hole that drops you down into the pantry. But because you've got little winged boots, you don't actually take falling damage. You just kind of gently land and then resume your dancing. I I want to imagine that I actually don't even like fall. I just river dance like slowly <laughs> down the hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on down here? All right. um, and then I assume I would see Paulton and Simon, especially in dress. No, nope. right? You are now one level below them. What? But you didn't know that. No, I didn't. Yeah, I think you um, got down towards near where Yeth and Black Viper are. So that's the tentacles. They are. Paulton and uh, Simon are now the only ones on the second floor. Oh, sorry. Um, that's all right. Things you know and things you don't. You're well, I was bad. saying sorry to Paulton. <laughs> yeah. I, I was trying to come for you. Uh, okay, what am I looking for? Oh. So do you want to make a saving throw to end the dancing? I also want to make a um, mm, uh, bonus action if I can see anyone who looks like they need me. Uh, okay, so as soon as you land in the pantry, you can look out through the opening into the main room, and you can see Strix on the stairs, the spiral staircase, staircase leading up. You see a whole nest of tentacles basically blocking the entire doorway and much of the room beyond. You don't think you can get out of this pantry without going through the tentacles. They even cover, or, or almost completely cover, the hatch leading down to the basement. Uh, you can't see him because he's ducked behind the bar, but you can hear Dieth calling out from the middle of the tentacle patch. Where's the earth elemental? The earth elemental is also in the tentacle patch. Okay. With Dieth. Uh, That's here too. The masked woman that you know, Evelyn, as the Black Viper is not in the tentacle patch, but right at the edge of it. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to misty step next to her. Poof. Hi. So, <laughs> great. Yeah, you can get a, you can avoid the tentacles, and you appear right next to her. And from that point of view, you're far enough now into the room that you can see DF ducked behind the bar. Uh, I'll be right there just as soon as I stop dancing. Hold on. 
<laughs> Go ahead and make a, uh, gosh, I don't remember what the save is. Um, mm -mm. It is a dexterity saving throw. I roll. I so hope we fail. I want to <laughs> 22. You okay. break the spell. <laughs> she, she, you jinxed it, Vivka. And she plants right. her feet, but since Evelyn is floating, it's like a little, like, like a cheerleader star move in the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So dancing Evelyn is now just Evelyn. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And that's the end of Evelyn's turn. Black Viper. You are not currently in the tentacles. Neither is the small little devil boy, Squidly, who is near you. And, mm. and now you've got, of course, Evelyn standing next to you, fluttering next to you. No one has actually, like, attacked these tentacles or anything. Correct. Although your best guess is that these, are, these tentacles are a magical spell, a magical effect. Um, so whether you can even harm them or not remains to be seen. Well, I mean, that sounds like a dare. It, it could be. <laughs> yep. I, I, the one weakness of Black Viper is dares. So I yeah. am going to, um, I'm going to try to attack these tentacles. I mean, I figured they're, they're, you said that I was right on the edge of it. So yes. they're pretty, right? Yeah, they fill a 20 foot square kind of in the middle of the room. Okay. So you could, in theory, circumvent them by walking around the perimeter of the room. But they are right between you, and you do see that two of the kids are actually in the tentacles. The, uh, the wizard, the little wizard, and the little fighter oh, girl. Oh, oh, the kids? The kids that were attacking me? Yeah. Ah, uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to try to attack the, the tentacles? How close am I to the, the stairs? You are five feet away from the stairs. And the bottom half of the stairs are sort of got the tentacles coiling around them. Just above those tentacles, uh, you see Strix. Okay, so would I be able to make my way like up to the higher top area of the stairs with my movement? The only way you could do it without actually coming into contact with the tentacles and potentially being grabbed by them is to kind of spring off of a table nearby. Parkour. Parkour. Parkour, parkour off a table onto the staircase. That also sounds like a dare. I, I, would, I would like to try to do that, yes. That, that will be for you a fairly easy dexterity acrobatics check. Uh, time, for the, time for the big dice. <laughs> uh, acrobatics, that is a 18. Kaboom. Uh, yeah, you, you do exactly that. You spring off a wall onto the table, off the table, onto the railing of the staircase and effortlessly pull yourself onto it so that you're sharing basically a step with Strix. Uh, really quick, right before that happened, I looked at, uh, at Evelyn and I was like, nothing surprises me in this house. This like winged creature just like appearing before me to stop dancing. And then she I just nods and smiles. Uh -huh. Sure. So I, I leap over, I jump parkour, jump up, um, land by Strix, mm -hmm. and I want to uh, take out my hand crossbow mm -hmm. and fire a shot into the tentacles to see if it does it. Okay, make an attack roll. Strix is just like, wow, that was real. That was impressive. That was really, yeah, that was really neat. <laughs> I can't do anything like that. Uh, as I pull out the hand crossbow and shoot it, I then look at Strix and go. <laughs> and she's uh, like, that was that was really aggressive. I don't appreciate. It. <laughs> That's a twenty-five to hit. All right, uh, you hit a rubbery tentacle, and um, your bolt just kind of bounces off of it. Harmlessly. I snicker. <laughs> oh. Strix? You know, and, and as a bonus action, I will uh, turn to Strix and bow and go, your try now. And indeed, oh, yes, indeed I, it is. Strix's I know, turn. I know, I know what I'm doing, so it's, uh, it's going to be fine. Dispel oh, magic. Good. All right. Um, this is a fourth level spell. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to make a DC 14. Okay. Um, um, it's on my staff. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's on my staff. Um, okay. yeah. It's three charges for my staff. Great. But um, ooh, do I have to do that? 
Uh, da, 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 yeah. Dispel magic. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's a spell fourth level or higher, make an ability yeah. check using your spellcasting okay. ability. Cool. Charisma. So, yeah, okay, so I'm adding just my, I'm just adding my modifier. Yeah, your proficiency okay. modifier. All right, then. Or sorry, your, your, um, it's, a, it's an ability check. So it's a charisma ability check, um, and that's it. So just add your charisma bonus. Okay, okay, cool. So that's 14. That is exactly what you need. Yay! All right, the tentacles magically disappear, which is good because they're really bad. Okay, well, I do a really bad wink <laughs> <laughs> at the Black Viper, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I have my, my arms folded, and I'm like tapping my foot. I'm just like, <laughs> it's not an attractive wink, nor is it aggressive. It's just really awkward. <laughs> Like someone well, who's figuring out how to wink for the first time. Yes, yeah. like she's never done this, and there might be something in her eye. You just don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, next up is the elemental. What would you like it to do? Now, just to recap, uh, there is a. Um, you know that there is somebody down in the basement because they must have cast the spell. Oh, cast the tentacle spell, yes. Exactly. Um, yeah, do I know also where the giant crossbow bolts were coming from? Uh, those, no, you're not sure, but they, okay. you, you could tell the direction they were coming from. They were coming from the front of the house, possibly, okay. out, possibly outside somewhere. Okay, um, but Diep is currently hiding. He's just crouched down by the bar, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I took um, out the drow that was holding Squidly. Yeah. That's right, okay, well... If I know that there is a spellcaster in the basement, I'm just kind of kind of yell like, "Hold on, I'll kill you in a second. and then just like look at the air fell hunter and be like, "Just go, go punch things in the basement." <laughs> All yeah. right, so the elemental will smash through the bar because honestly, oh. that's the only way it can get to the hatch. I just watched it and I'm like, "No <laughs> <laughs> just, No, I didn't <laughs> Mashes it flat, pastries, glass everywhere. No. Uh, so then it goes down through the hatch, but it's actually too big to fit. So it just sort of falls in and cr and just creates a, a much larger hole, uh, tearing out the hatch with it. And then I think that was load bearing. Yeah. And now you can make some attack rolls for it there, Holly. <laughs> just, no. Let's see now. Um, I look really guilty, like as if I did it myself. Holly? Or else it's just going to be like powder. Holly, make know. Holly make a okay. make two d twenty rolls, okay. one for each okay. of your elementals' fists, and okay. add add eight to each roll. Okay, so I'll take average damage. So that's a twenty seven and a okay a seventeen. You hear the elemental punching <laughs> something soft down there. <laughs> <laughs> All I right, you hear like squishing. Yeah, pretty much, uh, squishing noises. After, after, you know, the, the smashed wood noises. Right. And uh, so, yeah, um, there's a lot of chaos down in the basement right now. Oh, before, actually, I wanted to, before I ended my turn, to Misty step over to where DF is. Okay, that's not too far. It's like literally okay. seven feet away. In fact, right, you so could... I'm just going to Misty step yeah, okay. over there. And just like, I guess just like, I'm just going to ready like healing in case any more arrows come. Okay. Uh, the next turn is Waffles. Those of you who are downstairs, which is now most of you, um, can see... What does Waffles do? Waffles lets out a terrible howl. Like, like a howl you haven't heard her give before. One, oh, that, you, no. one that conveys a sense of terror and emergency. Ooh. Emergency! Oh, I can't imagine this. Can you can you do the noise? Oh my God. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, that was making me sad. No. And uh, so, and then let's see. That doesn't take much of an action. Oh, then she actually shows up at the top of the stairs coming down the stairs butt first. And imagine this gigantic owlbear 
trying to come down this slim spiral staircase backward. <laughs> Does she get like stuck a bit? She does. She does get yeah. stuck a bit, but she's forcing her way down, and you realize that she's dragging something uh, what? with what? her with her mouth, but you can't see it because all you see is Albert butt and fur. All right. I'm. We're really trying to kind of have hit the gravity for this scene, you know, and I think <laughs> that. I think that our bear butt is not, <laughs> not the route. I, I really I, hope her little owl bear tail is just going back and forth really fast. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm Why would she be happy about this? Or just like when like dogs are like really scared and alert, it's just like pew. I'm assuming like, yeah. that whatever I'm assuming that whatever it is that Waffles is dragging is just hitting every stair. Very <laughs> <fast>. <laughs> yes. Cool. Um and whatever it is yeah and so i gotta make a check for her i mean honestly i'm hoping it's dragging your body nate <laughs> that that was yes relatively implied. and uh as she does manage to squeeze through coming down the stairs and you do see that she's pulling paulton by the oh, boot God. and paulton's head is going <laughs> clunk, 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 down every step no. she's oh god trying to bust. So All right, uh, and then Paulton is actually stuck on something, like his arm is oh, tangled no. up at the top, and so he's actually being now stretched out on the staircase. Oh god! And it's it's because he's wearing like a strap of something. You realize it's probably the bag of holding that's gotten caught on something. Oh, of course ah. it is. DS, yes. it's your turn. Oh man, cool man. I like how consistently my deaths are always hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, everybody else so gets to laugh in the face of Paulton's death. Currently, there is no immediate threat. Well, currently the elemental seems to be holding whatever's down there at bay. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen any more drow pop up. There's still the archer outside who, when his turn comes around, is probably going to start shooting arrows through the building again. Yeah. Only so much I can do, though. Yep, as that's true. And Paulton uh, does not look well. No. Uh, so by this point, both Evelyn and Strix are nearby me, right? Yes, and all three of you can see this tragedy unfold. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I'll, I guess I'll just kind of look over to either one of, to both of them in kind of like point up towards Paulton and just be like, help him. And then I will try, would I, would I be able to kind of like vault up the side of the staircase or anything to get past Waffles to make my way upstairs? <laughs> just yeah. walk past Paulton's dead body like, excuse me. Yeah, well, you can essentially, you can essentially pull a black viper and vault up onto the railing and then basically walk around the outside of the staircase to the top yeah. and then squeeze in through the top. Basically, I want to do that because whatever took out Paulton upstairs is still upstairs. Yeah, go ahead and make a dexterity acrobatics check. All right. Which for you shouldn't be too hard. I hope you're watching because it's going to be really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pull, pull a black Davey's bumper. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, just start to leave and stretch like, I was going to heal you. All right, bye. I'm not dead on the ground. Uh, 28. Okay, yes. You, you own that staircase. Ha! When you get up to the top of the staircase, you see there is a common room. There is a blood trail from the top of the staircase to the door to the hallway. Obviously, this is Paulton's blood streaked across the floor. Uh, you can see that the, his, his bag of holding is indeed caught on something. Uh, you can also see through the open hallway door, Simon lying face down on the floor. Wow. Damn it. I don't know if it's a tendon conundrum or not, but it is. Because right now, DS is caught to the caught bag of holding with the super important stone of galore in it. Mm -hmm. And also the dying child. <laughs> Historically, what? not his... We uh... all know his priority. <laughs> Historically, not his priority. Yeah. 
priority has always been his friends. So that's Dia true. Make way Uncle Dia. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pull that on me. To be Never fair, his, to be fair, his whatever you do, his dad's not going to know. <laughs> uh, I am going to try to make my way towards Simon. Okay. When you look at him and get to him, uh, you can see that he has been, there is a flattened imp on the floor. So there's nice. evidence that there's something of, of what happened here. You can also see that Simon is all sort of bloated and puffy from where he got stung and Ooh. poisoned by these imp creatures. Uh, you can make a medicine check to see if you can maybe stabilize him. Okay, <laughs> I guess. It looks like his only chance. You guess? <laughs> cool. Boy, oh boy, oh yeah. boy. Wow, no pressure here. Look, about that medicine check. Oh, actually pretty good, 19. Yay! Okay. Um, you're not sure, but you think, uh, you know, you... Through... Um, Oh, well, you're not sure how you do it. I guess you could leech out the poison uh, that's that's coursing through his system. Um, but uh, essentially, you think that you've gotten to him just in time and that you may have stabilized him. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Well, then I guess that's pretty much my turn and yeah. I'm ready to be stabbed uh, three times yeah. in the back by poisonous tails. Yeah. And uh, you've, you've stopped his wounds from bleeding out. All right. I imagine you just like took a pie and like somehow whatever was in it like sucked up the poison, <laughs> just like on the ground. All uh, right. Well, I do have a. I actually do have antitoxin on me. I don't know if that would actually. That would be good. Well, bad. yeah. Let's say you use that. Yeah, I'll just say I used that, not properly, but. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that saved his life. Yeah. All right. Um... <laughs> Why? Why giggle? Why? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's a lie. That's cool. rude. Well, it's been that. real. <laughs> <Good job>. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> what can they do? Uh, you hear... Um, <laughs> Dieth, a, a broom, an animated oh, no. broom, <laughs> uh, comes, sort of follows you into the hallway and then starts sweeping up the dead imp. Oh, that's good. good. It's one of the unseen servants. Good Wait, we thought, I thought they were gone. Then. No, they were just unseen. That, that's a good broom. <sighs> yep, we'll skip that one for now. Then it's the kids' turn. All right, do the kids want to do anything? Let me know. Heck yeah, they want to help. Oh, Diath, uh, you also see clinging to a, uh, the railing on, on the staircase that winds up to the next level, DF, you see Martim. And he's Aww. just like, like he's in a cage, just hiding behind the railing. All right, well. Staring down at you. Only one of them was dying, so I made my choice. Uh, and he tells you that those little creatures uh, who attacked Simon uh, rooted through Paulton's bag and took something out of it. <gasps> No. We don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, we do. We don't know. Martin tells you it was, it was just kind of weird because whatever they took out seemed to have eyes on it that blinked. Oh, no. Yeah, we do. There was a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> cool. Any, well, any kids? Is that bag in, in your crotch? No, it was given to uh, Paulton at the end of. Well, it wasn't his crotch, but mm -hmm. it, yes. The imps didn't. But when it, when when he, when he fell over on his side, the imps pulled it out of his crotch and looted it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so they they hand check on the imp checks. Yeah. Yeah, they they ruffled through all of it. Yeah. Rummaged. Dare rummaged. I say. Rummaged indeed. So kids, any of the kids want to do anything on their turn? Yes. Where are the kids again? Martim is upstairs. All the other kids are down here in the tap room. <sighs> Nat, you were minutes away or seconds away from being uh, 
crushed to death by tentacles, but they're gone. Uh, Martin was, is probably just going to be staying scared yep. and hiding and tells Dieth exactly where those imps went in the exact direction and <laughs> their exact location. He says once, once one of them got the stone, it disappeared. Like, just oh. poop. Cool. Like, huh. it, like it turned invisible. All right. Invisible. What is the nearest thing to Squidly living that Squidly doesn't like? The nearest thing, uh, so the nearest thing to him currently is Aunt Evelyn, which he likes. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, well, the Black Viper's not here anymore. She's up on the staircase. Uh, and he likes Strix. So there's a dead dark elf lying at his feet. Um, and then uh, that's about it. Can Squidly go upstairs to see if there's something to, to kill? Well, he, he'd have trouble getting up the stairs right now because of the owlbear on it, unless he finds a way to sort of clamor over it, which would require a check. Yep, he's going he's gonna to climb an owlbear. All right, go do like, like a d20 roll. Grabbing, grabbing the hair and the yep. puffs. Yep. And uh, that's a 15? That is a success. You clamor cool. up over the owlbear. Uh, you see Paulton um, being pulled down by the boot. You stride past Paulton. You probably step on his crotch or some silly mm -hmm. thing. And ah. then, <laughs> and then uh, you run up to the staircase where you see uh, Paulton is still snared on a, on a bag, a satchel. And mm -hmm. there's a blood trail leading to a hallway with Simon and Diath. Simon doesn't look so good. Uh, Squidley's just kind of stepping over like the... Paulton's body and through the blood. It's like, sorry, sorry, skip, sorry, <laughs> skip, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, that's gross. Okay. <laughs> um. So Simon's not looking so good, and there's no like immediate threats. Not that you can see you now. I'm gonna go check on Simon. Okay. Uh, you can see that uh, it looks like he got stung by like really big bees, um, and uh, so he's all kind of his dick discolored. But mm -hmm. uh, he is breathing shallowly, so that's a good sign. He's going to, like, grab him by the collar and pull him up and just be like, wake up! <laughs> Don't die on me! That doesn't work. <laughs> well, I've tried everything. I mean, browbeating him back to life is not necessarily known as... I love Jared's face that Steve is just sitting there like, ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> work together. I've done, I've done everything I can. Nat, he, Nat and Jenks, are you doing anything? Nat is going uh, to, she didn't uh, hear the owlbear cry, but I imagine it was so loud that it like shook the floor. Yeah. And that, uh, sensing that really hyper-focused her on what Waffles is um, doing. So mm -hmm. she sees Waffles carrying Paulton down the stairs. So she's going to go try to help Waffles uh, with Paulton and at least like keep his head from hitting more stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As she pulls him down the stairs. You can, and e then... you can easily flutter up to Paulton and you see that he is dying. Um, Nat looks around for an adult and there's no one nearby and she, she sees that in this moment she is the only one that can take action. Yeah. Well, Jenks, is, Jenks follows her too. So it's her and Jenks, like Jenks will come with her, with Nat. Okay, okay. so she signs to Jenks like, this is a field triage situation. I have to stabilize him. Will you help me? Jenks just looks at her and is like, it's a field trip? <laughs> she, she signs louder. <laughs> oh! Jenks is like, oh, sorry. He's still got his beach hat on, too, by the way. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And he's just, like, just an oh. umbrella headband? Thing, yeah. That one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he has his wand that can turn things into objects, but that isn't, he's like, should I make him some water? <laughs> Can you make real medicine? Uh, would Jinx know where Strix keeps her real medicine? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Can you like poly? He can go get it. Like, medicine? like she probably has. Like, I know we have some healing potions and stuff. Like, probably, yeah. probably in the pantry downstairs. Yeah. So he'll just be like, "I'll go get a potion. I know where they are." Okay, so. and then Nat will just hold Paulton's head, and she will try to stabilize him with like a medicine check. As, as much as a, a child, an Absolutely. eight or 10 year old girl can. Of course, just make a d20 roll. Well. Oh, she her. rolled a three. Okay. <laughs> she kind of pats him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, cool. Jenks went downstairs and I was like yep. going through Jenks, whatever covered. Jenks, make a make a d20 roll for me. Okay. Ooh, an 18. Okay. Yeah, you have to kind of make your way behind the remnants of the smashed bar past the hatch to the basement, which is all sort of broken wide. And the it's really difficult because you have to kind of skirt around the edge. There's a gap, looks like a big hole in the floor. Yeah, I'm scared. Uh, and so you have to skirt around that and you almost thought you were going to topple in and fall into the basement, but then you found purchase and slipped into the pantry <sighs> quite easily. And now you're right. rooting around on the shelves. Just make another d20 roll to see okay. if you can find what you're looking Ferdinand for. I have in my mouth. So I'm okay. like, oh, let's do this. It's like swinging around. Yeah. <laughs> and make another d20 roll to see if you can find what you're looking for. That's a seven. You do not. Mm. All right. All right. Cool. cool I cool. tried. Cool, cool. I think it's because Strix mislabeled everything. Mm. Strix, an arrow comes out of nowhere and oh. attempts to shoot you. Okay. <laughs> Does, wait, the arrow? I'm sorry. A big, a big black arrow big literally, arrow. literally flies through the western wall, pass, nope. passing through it almost like it's a ghost arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it hits you uh, with a twenty-four, you realize yeah, it's you not. That. It's not a ghost arrow. Uh huh. It's a real painful arrow. Uh, cool. And so you take. A you just hear this like ow. You take twenty-two points of damage from that arrow. Okay. And then a second one comes at you. And it's going to hit you as well. Uh, but it did shitty damage. Uh, 17 points of damage. Okay. Cool. So, so 39 total. I'm not doing great. Uh, I have two giant see. arrows sticking out of me. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Nobody's outside yet, so they might not see that. But Sister Narai, you probably might see something. Okay. Make a perception check. I'm on it. Oh, I have... Let me pull up my sheet. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah! Okay, I am actually going to show you this one because I don't... I, I'm sorry for all of you who are watching, Whoa, but this is going to be a nat 20. Nice! Okay. All Yay. right. I don't wanted this to be just like a redux of my first time playing with with y'all and when I was rolling really hot, so I want to like play on it. <laughs> I'm sorry for like anybody who threw up with that vertigo situation. Yeah. So you're running through, you're running down a, a, a street with just a few building lanterns to light it uh, between Hassenter Street and Selmore Street. Uh, you're about a block away from Trollskull Alley. When you see um, flying over the buildings, Toward Troll Skull Alley, where you're headed, same trajectory you're on, a number of small flying snakes. And you recognize them because this is, the Zentarum use flying winged snakes as messengers and couriers. Uh, these ones are fluttering madly, so you can really hear their wings working hard because they've got, they're coiled around what appear to be flasks. And you know what this is all about. There is, of all the members of the Zentarum in the city that you have to deal with, the one you loathe the most is a gnome alchemist named Schemo, because he's a psychotic little bastard. His name is Schemo. <laughs> yes. As, is that a stage name, like Ringo Starr? <laughs> Perhaps. Oh, uh, God. And so, uh, but in addition to making potions and other things for the Zentarum, he also makes alchemists fire. And you can see that these winged snakes are basically carrying flasks of the luminous stuff in the same direction you're going. Now, Istrid, the only way Schemo would be doing this is if Istrid told him to. The drow down below are fighting your elemental. You can hear it. Okay. Wait, my elemental? No, I'm no, talk I... talking about Strix now. Okay, great. Uh, all right, and I'm just going to take average damage when they hit. They don't have magical weapons, so it sucks to be them. Um, God damn it. So you can hear Dark Elves chipping away at your big colossal elemental down there. And then, right. uh, but uh, there's, it doesn't look like that they've destroyed it. Uh, it's still 
rumbling and stomping around and destroying everything that was anything in your basement. Uh, so they're done. Oh, the Drow spell Spellcaster is... Oh, nice. Okay. A cloud of oh, noxious green gas billows up out of the basement to fill part of the chamber above. And I need... I think this is a pretty big cloud. Da, 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 20 foot radius. Yeah, that's huge. Um, so this cloud this is, getting bad. is going to, it's going to hit Nat, no. Jenks, no, no. Evelyn, no. Black Viper, Strix, and that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. I have some sort of immunity. Or also in Evelyn's uh, aura. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Evelyn is, she is within 10 feet of all of them. So that's good. Do we, we save versus anything? Oh yeah. Uh, I need each of you to make a constitution saving throw, including one for Nat and one for Jenks. And everyone gets plus five. Everybody gets, oh no, Jenks, Jenks, Jenks is out of the aura. Sad, Yay. sad for Jenks, because he, he went into the I'm pantry. I'm immune to disease, but I guess I'm not immune to poison. No, this, is, okay. this will still affect you. So let me know what you rolled, starting with... Said con. Is this is Constitution. This, by the way? Is oh, yeah, Paulton's in the gas cloud, too. Thanks for reminding me. I'm oh, and also, <laughs> is this, would this constitute spell damage or just a condition? What? Do you, God, what? No, this is, I, this is actual damage. Am I even okay. breathing? <laughs> Because I have um, resistance to damage from spells in that aura too, but. Okay, great. Am I in the aura? You are in the aura and uh, you, but I don't think, since this is a con save, even though you're unconscious, you might still have a chance of succeeding. Um, well, it's yeah, if you're unconscious, you automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws, but you can make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Jared, are you okay? All right, let's start with <laughs> Evelyn. What He's did you done. roll, Evelyn? I rolled a 16. Okay. A 16 is good enough, so you take half damage. And combined with the resistance aura, do I take half again? Yeah, so you'll take, Evelyn will take a quarter damage. And so, everybody has, in 10 feet, has resistance to damage. Oh, great. Because I have the aura of warding and the aura of protection. And what's their bonus on their save? Plus five. Okay, Strix, with your plus five on your save, what did you roll? Uh, Strix got a 15. Okay, that's enough. So you're also going to take a quarter damage. And then Jenks got a 17. Okay, uh, that is enough. He'll take half damage. Nat? Oh. I it's also used my... Um, okay. Uh, I used my divine dice to add Is that more with the plus five? Damage. Yeah. Okay, then she's going to take... Half damage. Uh, how did you do, Paulton? Not 20. Excellent. So you're going to take a quarter damage. Which so for how does that work? Well, Duh. it means that he gets an automatic failed saving throw. Cool. So he's one success and one failure. Uh, cool. And uh, Black Viper. 10? Is that with the plus five? Yes. Well, uh, that's assuming Evelyn wants to give you the plus five. I, <laughs> I should ask. I yeah, she does. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I mean, okay. it doesn't matter. It's, it's still a 10. So you're going to take half damage. Oh, okay. All right. So the damage from the poison. Crit didn't matter. Crit didn't matter. Didn't matter. You should use that 20 for your death save. Ah. Uh, oh. Ooh. Ah, it's so mean. mean. Boy. Okay, so. That's ruthless, cool, Perkins. Cool. So nobody's going to take the full damage. That's nice. Yay, Evelyn. May the power of Lathander bless you even in the Evelyn, dark... you take four points of poison damage. Ooh, a paper cut. As does Strix. Ow. Nat, Jenks, and Black Viper take eight poison damage. That puts Nat and Jenks down. Oh, no. The cloud 
continues to billow forth and continues to fill the area, and people who start their turns here will take the damage again. Halton's down body just kind of <laughs> like coughs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now it's Paulton's turn. Paulton, you have a death save. Oh, do I? Yes. D20 roll, nothing added to it. Uh, what's this? What is it? Straight, the... straight D20. Uh, what was 10? 10 is good. 10 is a success. So now you have two successes and one failure. Cool. Well, all right, I, just, I guess just uh, come back to me. I'll be back in an hour. All right. <laughs> um, DF, make a perception check. Uh, okay. I hope it's to see a little piece of shit imp. <laughs> oh, that's some of my best perception ever. Uh, 29. Okay. Uh, in the common room next door to the hall you're in, you hear the window smash. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's not my turn right now. Is it's it? not. Yeah, I think so. Okay, but I heard that. Yeah. Sister Narai. Yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, so I'm in the street. Yes, or am yes. I? Yes. You are. I, you I are running down. You are running down the street. I. So how close are the snakes? They are forty feet up. Uh, I need to look up something right now. Yeah. Uh, and they are not over the the, the thing, right? They're flying they're over the over they're the... flying over the rooftops, basically. They're oh, oh they're not, but they're not over the Waffle House, are they? No. They're okay. they're heading in that direction. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. All right. So I need to make two ranged spell attacks against the the most central snake to the group okay. of snakes. Um, I'm. Uh, Narai sees that shit, does a cursory glance around her, which is hardly even a perception check, mm -hmm. uh, and is going to just like shoot a couple Eldritch Blasts. So here are my 220s here. Okay, excellent. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so this is a plus six. So one of them, one of them is a 13, and one of them is a 19. All right. The 19 is definitely going to hit. Great. The, the 13, you said? Yes. Just misses. Okay, that's fine. As long as the second one hits. <laughs> yep. I'll it miss does. the second one. I'll just be like, I, no, I correct my aim very slightly. Right, right. I have to lead them, um, and try and and make the snakes ignite because I assume that they're flying, as you said, in pretty tight formation. Yeah, they're flying in a formation. Okay, great. Um, All right. Uh, uh, so yeah. you hit the creature, but you were basically aiming for the flask that it was. Uh, if I can, if I can set it off, great. Yeah. Or even make it do like a like a like a like a Darth Vader's escort and crash into the other ones. Yeah. Even better. I'm hoping to recreate the start of the Last Jedi right now. Roll damage. Yes. Oh yay. Okay, so this is one d10 force damage. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, I rolled the zero. Nice. Um, okay. We do zero I, damage. I promise <laughs> okay. I'm not. I, I promise I'm not making this up. People okay. Promise. So this is one d10 force damage. So this is ten force damage to hit the snack. All right. Uh, when you hit it, it explodes, yes! uh, igniting its alchemist's fire, as well as causing the alchemist's fire of all the surrounding ones to explode. Yay! And go raining down onto the rooftops. Yay! <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Yes. So all all this all this streaming fire rains down and lights three rooftops ablaze. Fine. Fuck. Just, well, uh, just kind of my problem. Fire and water deep. Problem. Yeah. <laughs> but not on our house. Yes. yes. And and I, they, you know, you know, the, the the cops are close, so I can only imagine that the fire crews have uh, some kind of a, like a float or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, they can handle it. Better rooftops than a bunch of them all hitting the same thing. And then you uh, keep running, so you'll probably be, given how fast you move, you'll be probably be at the Waffle House at the end of your next turn. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. I just need to need a shot or something like that. Cool. Great. Um, nice. In that case, I have nothing else. To do. I'm headed to the, the house across from the Waffle House while still watching the skies. Okay. Evelyn. Oh, God. You are in, you start your turn in the gas cloud. I need you to make another saving throw. Anna. There we go. 
It's a con. Uh, it is a con, yeah. And you got your plus five. 29. Okay. Uh, so you're going to take another four points of damage at the start of your turn. She goes, <coughs> delicately. <coughs> Um, she sees Paulton lying on the ground and the children mm -hmm. crumpled next to him, I presume. Yes. And she needs to heal them all at once. So she is going to... And you know, if you heal them, but they're still in the cloud when their turn comes around, they're going to take the damage again and probably go down. The kids, I mean. Mm. Can she, it would probably be more than one action for her to like scoop them all up and drag them out of the cloud, right? Uh, you could pick up one of them. Only one. As an action. Make your choice. She has no idea where the cloud is coming from, right? Uh, it's clearly coming from the basement. But she couldn't, like, target the caster. She can't see the caster. She is going to, she looks frantic, and she's looking at these three people that she loves, and she's looking around for the caster, and she goes, go, 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 and she just slams the floor with Lightfall. Okay. Um, and that automatically does radiant damage, correct? Mm-hmm. And so because of that, she can... Uh, heal everyone 1d10. Okay. That's yeah. neat. Yeah. So a pulse comes out from the weapon and you give Finally, healing. Evelyn Smash does some good. Exactly. <laughs> she, she probably yells Lathander while she does it too. Um... As, as the ability is written, it says when the wielder hits a creature with the weapon and deals radiant damage, but you know what? I'm going to modify that, and I'm just oh, going to okay. say, because I like this evil and smash idea. Cool, because I didn't write that down. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I can change how things work. She can change. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's great. Uh, so give uh, roll, your dice, roll your die once to determine how many hit points everybody gets. Come on. Bless it, please, everyone. Bless. Bless, bless, bless. Thank you. Uh, Spiritus Sanctus Dominus Pizza. <laughs> nine. Go and pepperoni. Myself. All right, so up to six creatures gain nine hit points back. So that would be Paulton, mm -hmm. the two kids, mm -hmm. Strix, you, Yay. Black Viper, Albert. Well, they can't do Albert. I, I'll do me. <laughs> okay. I can't do the Albert you said. You, Strix, the two kids, Paulton. And you can either do Albert or Black Viper. Oh, uh, does Waffles look like she needs help? Uh, Waffles does look like she's taken some damage. Then it'll be Waffles. Sorry, okay. Viper. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you made the right choice. I mean, the tail is too cute. You I know. And that's your action. Um, there's a divot in the floor. That's nice. Um, antiquing. She, she's like, we'll always know that was the, the moment Lathander blessed us all. <laughs> Uh, now, do you, ha you have movement left? Do you want to stay in the cloud? <sighs> yeah, I think she will move. <coughs> yeah, I think she's going to stay in the cloud because she <coughs> wants to make sure her aura holds that makes sense. those people, so she'll just stay planted. Black Viper, what do you do? Well, I mean, seeing as how I was the only one not healed, I'm, <coughs> I'm fine. Oh, that's right. You're still in the cloud. Uh, so make another saving throw. Constitution save. Apologies for the dice. Thump. Thunk. Eleven. Oh wait, is that? Do I still get the plus five? You do. Okay. So, so then that's. That's 16. great. Um, because you're in Evelyn's aura, you only take a quarter damage from this, which is going to be for you three points of damage. Okay, I can handle that. Shake it off. Yep. It's all good. If you just go up to the top of the staircase to the level above, you'll be out of the cloud. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, when you get up there, you can see that there's a smashed window behind you at the top of the staircase. Uh, 
and you hear the fluttering of little wings uh, as they quickly flee through the break in the window. You can also see a, what looks at, at a glance like a dead boy lying on the floor through an open door um, and a blood trail leading to him. No sign of DF. Do I have any like health potions or anything on me? That is a good question. The answer to which is no. That was an odd lead up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to run over to the dead boy. And when you do, that's when you see DF. He, he was just out of sight in the hallway, um, but he's he's got that look on his face. And yeah, you go over to him and you can see you the know. boy. The boy is actually still alive. He's just very shallowly breathing and is unconscious. Okay, as, as I run by DF, I go like, <laughs> did, did you do this? <laughs> no. <laughs> the look on your face, it, it, it look, you looked guilty. Um, and I'm going to uh, pat down the boy and see if he has a health potion on him. Oh, okay. so she starts going over and just patting Are down you, Simon. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like like, did you do this? I'm just saying that Lifts one of his arms up to check under, yeah. <laughs> Drops it down. Uh, you don't find any healing potions on the poor, unconscious, stung, oh my gosh. multiply stung boy. Did I find anything else fun? Oh, um, that is a darn good question. Oh, jeez. Full of good questions. Uh, yeah, you can see that he's got a set of pipes, like playing pipes. Aw. I hold them, I look them over. I toss <gasps> <laughs> 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 They mean nothing. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Uh, but uh, you, um, you also haven't seen any signs of the Stone of Golor lying about anywhere. So you're not sure where that is. I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but that's what I was looking mm -hmm. for. Also mm -hmm. a health potion, but also that, but also a health potion. Yep. Um, so searching, uh, searching the boy was an action. You still got some movement left or a bonus action if you want. Uh, I'm, I'm nowhere near the cloud, right? You are, the cloud is on the level below you, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, um, I'm just gonna kind of, uh, man, given this house, I'm just gonna kind of ready up to see if anything else flies through a window or a of cast. Course. Um, the, the window, I don't want that to be directly on my back. Like, got it. Can... Yeah, you've moved out of the way of the window. Okay. Great. Okay, then uh, Strix, you're in the gas cloud. Yay, it's my turn. Constitution saving throw, plus five. That's 17. Uh, that's good enough. So you're going to take a quarter damage, which for you will be okay. three points. Okay. Um, I'm also, one, two, three. I'm going to dispel this Okay. Again. Uh, make a charisma, Please go away. charisma, add your charisma modifier. Oh, man, that's good. Nine. That's 24. The cloud goes away. Ha! It's gone. Would you like to move? I yell loudly. Um, and I noticed that Paulton and everyone else has been healed. Um, everyone else seems okay, from what I can tell. Uh, I mean, yeah. Not everyone was healed. Right. <laughs> everyone currently in the room with you has been healed, and there's okay. no immediate danger of the cloud. Okay. Um, but... I don't know if that wizard is dead down there yet. So I would like to cast um, my quicken spell mm -hmm. of my spirit guardians um, so that the chickens can be around the house protecting. Well, they go out 15 feet from you, right? Yes. So they're going to be in the room. Will they go down the stairs? Like, will be far enough they just, down? They just form, a, like, a ring, a protective ring around you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, never mind. I want something that's going to go down the stairs. I mean, I already have that that elemental. True. And it sounds like the elemental is wreaking havoc down there, or at least keeping those enemies at bay. Okay. Okay. But the, the caster keeps being an asshole, but, like, whatever. I just tell the elemental, like, to kill, kill the caster. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, I know what I need. I have these stupid arrows in me, which you is do. stupid. So, okay. So actually, I'm going to quicken spell and heal myself. Good call. So I'm going to heal myself. Okay. And I'm going to do it at, let me see. 
Ugh. I'm just going to do it at uh, third level. Yeah. We'll do it third level. Level. Nine, seven. So that's 23 points to me. Nice. Excellent. Uh, when Waffles realizes that Paulton is conscious, uh, she stops grabbing onto his boot and pulling him down the stairs and instead just kind of uh, continues to back her way down this awkward spiral staircase as best she can until she gets to the bottom. And then she runs over to you, Strix, and just kind of playfully tackles you like she's absolutely thrilled to see you. Oh, that's nice. I'm just like, oh, I'm dying! And she, she licks you with her sandpapery tongue. Oh, I just, I'll just like ruffle her and be like, yeah. Waffles is dangerous! She looks like she was, like she's been very badly spooked. Oh, Aww. no, baby. She's so spooked. Like, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. We just have to get the rest of the bad guys out of the house. There's just a couple more bad guys we gotta get. DF. Yuck. <laughs> Uh, whilst Black Viper is distracted at looting Simon. Yeah. Uh, Putting a child's nearly dead body. I am going to uh, make haste to where I heard that window break. Yes. So sort of past the back the way the Black Viper came to the common room, you can see yeah. that there is a hole in the window, kind of a triangular hole at the bottom of the window, um, big enough for a tiny creature to slip through. Big enough for both a creature and, say, a stone? Yeah. Okay. And from here out the window, am I able to see... Back alley. Flying imps or a floating stone carried around? No. Nope. Are they flying or do they just have little bony legs? Imps have wings. Okay. Um, and they can turn invisible. At will. T-I-L. You see nothing. God damn it. But you hear something in the distance, like might be like horns playing and music, like maybe three blocks away. What? Yeah. And you hear, it sounds like the town is kind of alive and some sort of party going on. This is so terrible. I hate it. Different kind of party. Oh, uh, man. Okay. Well. Uh, okay, so I know the upper portions of the building are still pretty blowed up. Yeah, the third and fourth floor. Third floor uh, contains much of the debris of the fourth floor. Do I still have an okay uh, path at getting up to whatever the current ceiling is? Yes, if you go back the way you just came, uh, past the Black Viper, up the stairs, past Martum, you can uh, continue up the stairs all the way to the fourth floor, which is open to the sky. Would it be faster just to use my second story work and just climb up this like rubble from the window? Um, yeah. Yeah, you think yeah. you can even get up there faster that yeah, way? Yeah, because I might, I might just go out the window and just climb straight up. Yep. Okay, that's what you do. You scamper yeah. up the, the back side of the building to the burnt, charred fourth floor uh, where you get a view above. And from up here, you can see that there is, in fact, some sort of well-lit parade marching down the high road about a few, a few blocks to the west. And of course you can hear the ruckus much more clearly up here. That's so confusing. Uh, I don't know why that's coming. And then from here, uh, I'm looking for, again, any sign of the imps, almost fruitlessly probably. Listen uh, for leathery flapping. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, or even like potentially, um, Notable figures kind of standing, I guess, nearby, waiting for imps to make the delivery. Make something. a perception check. Okay. Eh. Uh, still pretty good. 21. Okay. You can see to the south of here what looked like some small fires burning on the rooftops of some buildings about a block away. That's... <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, but you don't see hide nor hair of the imps or their masters. All right. Well, doesn't look like those fires are my problem. Nope. Uh, I guess I'm also looking for an archer. 
Okay, um, that you know you have to sort of go through the wreckage toward the front of the building, which is kind of the opposite side you climbed up on. Yeah, where I got shot from. Yeah, right? as you climb over the wreckage, I assume you're trying to not announce your presence up there and just keep yeah. it really low. Yeah. As you peer down uh, using your 21, you can see a figure standing outside of Fala's residence uh, with a big ass bow. And he's just taken another one. And he's just on the literally on the ground, preparing to shoot through the wall of the building. And you see it's a big half-orc, a monster. How far away is he from me? He would be, let's see. Like from where I'm up to where, down to where he is. 10, 20, 30, 40. So if you were to drop down the building, that's about a 30-foot drop. And then he is about 50 feet that way. I guess the so the about about thing, if you were to go diagonally about let's just say sixty feet make it an even sixty. Uh, well, I guess the bigger thing is if he's knocking up an arrow, I don't want him shooting into that building mm -hmm. or our building. So if it's if I can reach him from here with uh, thro with throwing moon yeah. splinter, I want to do that. Okay. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention about him is his eyes appear appear to be glowing. That's part of the reason why you can see him. Ah. Uh, I'm going to assume that's also how he's been seeing us in the building, and not possessed. I don't know. You don't know. He's got know. he's got a helm on, uh, with sort of a, a little black, uh, uh, plume or, or tail on it, and then through through the slits in his eyes, you can just see they're glowing as he's bringing his huge, long long bow to bear. All right. Well, if, if, can I can I reach him with a dagger throw from here? What's your range? The th or, sorry, it's a dagger, right? So uh, sixty feet is at the that's the that's as far as you can throw it. Okay. So because you'd be at long range, you will be at disadvantage on the throw. I'm still going to do that. Okay. Because I don't want him shooting in that building. I'd rather he attempts to do that. Okay. Where I've got cover. That after DF throws a dagger, realizes it doesn't matter because he right. can shoot. <laughs> you have no cover. Yeah. Uh, at disadvantage, 16. Uh, where's his step? That misses. That's fine. And then he'll recall Moon Splinter back to his hand. All right. That does get his uh, attention. But I hope I spooked him. You did. Uh, okay. That's Diath. Kids. Do any of the kids want to do anything? And no can be a perfectly fine answer. Well, what? I mean, we all just like woke up in the cloud, right? Yeah. Well, the cloud's gone. Strix dispelled so, it. So when Nat and Jenks, you, because of the healing that you received from Evelyn, you kind of wake up Nat on the stairs, Jenks in the pantry with a whole bunch of bottles lying on the floor around him. And it just feels like you're waking from a nap. <laughs> Nat's like, did I fall asleep? Um, Jenks is just going to continue sleeping. <laughs> he's, like, really He's like, oh, I not really comfy. He's just like falling asleep on the owl bear. All right. Nat was administering to Paulton. Does Paulton look okay to her? Yeah, she did a great job. He seems to be alive and conscious. <laughs> then she's just holding his head and like looking around for the adults to be like, see my good work? See, see what I did? She's just still... She'll just sit there. Squidly, you're upstairs with the Black Viper. Do you want to do anything? Um, Simon is still non-responsive. Is there anything that is the proper dimensions and weight that Squidly could attempt to yeet at the Black Viper? Uh, so he can probably like pull the 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 cap off the banister. Hell yeah. <laughs> and just throw this wooden ball at her head. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm gonna try and chuck it. Go ahead and make a trust. go ahead and make a D20 roll. You scamp. 16? 16? Mm -hmm. that, that hits her. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so you get clocked by this stupid wooden banister post thingy. <laughs> and uh, Let's say, oh gosh, just roll a d4, Squidly. Cool. Oh, him. Yeah. Three. 
You take three points of damage from this heavy wooden ball. Three points of balcony damage? Yes. <laughs> And for the rest of your turn, you are annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a continuous. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's my passive skill. Mm -hmm. He's just like, I'll show you. And Martin, so sure Martin you. was there as well, so he witnessed Squidly provoking this woman. And probably really impressed, but Martin is, uh, Martin is still just uh, scared of everything. Got it. Like oh, some Martin. Martin is just, just like, look that I'm giving right now, Martin should be scared. Martin's probably just like, oh. You see that? That was sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was sad. Really glad you're around now. Yeah, uh, I was real sad. Uh, Jared, the half orc kind of uh, takes his aim up at you, buddy, and then just lowers it back down and fires through the house, and then takes another one. No. <laughs> fires it through no. the house. Aha! You missed. Uh, Black Viper, you are crit oh. by the first oh, one. No! <laughs> I'm sorry! The person that nobody healed gets crit. Okay, yeah. sorry. Well, there was the, owl bear. the last order uh, Zaraj received from Istrid Horn was don't let any harm befall the kids. And apparently, he, pre he seems to think you're a threat to them. I don't know why. I don't know why <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because Squidly is uh, attacking you. Um, but, so the first one hits you, and this is going to really hurt. For 33. Uncanny dodge? So you have, uh, no. Oh, yes, she does. You have, you have one reaction, uncanny dodge. You can have the damage that you take. So 33 becomes 16 points of damage. So Squidly throwing that thing was me. essentially just yes. putting a target on her. Pretty much, yes. Whoops. Uh, and then the second attack, which uh, since you've already used your reaction, you can't uncanny dodge this one. Uh, it does 22 points of damage. How you doing? <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> Are you still on your feet? Yes. Okay, good. I'm sweating, like in actual. Two, two air, phantom arrows come out of the staircase, it looks like, and just shoot up at you, uh, nearly taking you off your feet. And Squidly, when those arrows come, they literally come from under your feet and lance through her. I did that. <laughs> I hear that. Yes, you do. I hear that. The, Okay. I'm real strong. Oh, uh, Strix, make two d20 rolls for me for your elemental. I forgot about him. Oh, okay. And just add. He's still squishing, right? Yep. Add eight to each one. Okay. So that's a dirty twenty and. Oh. Twenty and twenty-four. Okay, so squish, squish, squish. Mm-hmm. Um. Those of you who are in the tap room, which would be Evelyn and Strix and Nat, can you hear? the elemental getting farther away, like it's digging down into the tunnel, it must be pushing the enemies back into the sewers. Oh, that's good. Good job. Uh, and there are no drow forthcoming. Paulton, you're alive! <laughs> with the healing given to you by Lathander and Evelyn. Praise the morning, Lord. And Nat's like, like cradling my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is this child holding my head? Why am I on the stage? Why does my head hurt? Oh my God, why does my head hurt? What happened? She pats your forehead. Thank you. He like just very almost offensively like tries to sign like, thank you. <laughs> she like squints her eyes at you and like drops your head. <coughs> and <stands> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. She just strides down the stairs. Dun, 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 dun. It's like, so, what, what do, what, what's, what do I wake up to? What's going on? So, Lysander well, saved yeah. your life again. You see, the bar, the bar has been destroyed. There is loud pounding noises coming from the basement. Uh, there's a kid asleep, apparently, in the pantry. Um, <laughs> and Eve, Strix has been kind of cornered by. Waffles, who's licking her to death, 
and there's this horrible smell in the air, just the faint wisps of what used to be a toxic cloud hanging in the air. Cool. So someone's been feeding waffles eggs again. Yep. And Simon, who you last saw, who you reached out to, and, oh, my son. and said, I'm proud of you, my son. You don't see him anywhere. You have been moved. Oh, my son! I'm going to run upstairs and find my son. Okay. When you run upstairs, uh, you see an open window with a hole in it, uh, air coming in, night air coming in through that. But through an open doorway, you see your son lying on the floor, dead at the hands of the woman standing on top of him. <gasps> <laughs> no, you see a woman literally standing over him with two big arrows stuck in her. Those arrows look familiar to you. You have felt them. Um, Ow. And, uh, and Simon, Simon is lying dead at her feet, or maybe not dead. You're not sure. He, he like looks into the room and gasps and is just like, oh, no, and like runs straight toward like runs straight toward the woman and then just kind of like bumps her out of the way mm -hmm. and then just like like slides in in front of in front of someone just my son, what happened? And Come on. as I have these arrows in me, I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let me just move out of your way here. It's like that, that arrows were like for like two minutes ago. It's we're over it. Mm -hmm. All right, Simon. He, and uh, he is breathing, but is unconscious. And you can see why he's been poisoned and badly stung multiple times. Oh no, I don't have any kind of, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the heel. I'm not the support, mm -hmm. but I, <laughs> what can I do? What, do? Do I have an inkling of anything I can do? Uh, unless you have magical healing, nope. Call for Evelyn. Evelyn! <laughs> Our you... son is dying! <gasps> Our son! He's dying to death! <laughs> He's dying to death. Perfect. Sister Narai, when you come barreling out into the Trollskull Alley, you can see Ziraj, uh, his bow not currently loaded, just sort of reaching back in toward his quiver. Yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to know... Were the snakes the only leathery wings I heard flapping? Yes. Damn it. All the, right. The imps were not going uh, in your direction. Cool. Uh, in that case, um, do I see Dioth making a move toward him? N no. You okay. see, you see, the building appears to be mostly just dark, burnt out on the top. The top two floors are kind of a mess. The bottom two floors, uh, not in great shape either. Um, uh, you don't see anybody except Zaraj in the street. All right. Um, and he's not making a lot of noise, and he's sort of standing in a darkened place. If his eyes weren't glowing, you'd have a hard time seeing him yourself. All right. Um, I will... Um, staying to darkness, and I'll make a stealth roll for that. All right. Um, bad. Uh, I rolled poorly for stealth. I only rolled an 11. Um, so sticking kind of towards the darkness and towards the shadows, um, Narai is going to move toward uh, move towards Zaraj to kind of get a, get a, get an idea of what's going on with the situation right okay. now. You can get as close to him as you want to. How close do you want to get? Um, 20 feet. Uh, well, 50, let's say 15 feet before whispering, Zaraj! He, he doesn't look at you, um, a sort of a very subtle way of telling you that he knew you were there. Um, he doesn't seem uh -huh. to express any surprise, uh, but he does lower his weapon and just sort of cocks an ear. Um, where is the stone? I don't know. Damn. Um, she's going to look both ways around this, around the... Uh around the area she's he going says, to say. He says, the bard had it, but I don't know where it went. Where's He's, the bard? He might still have it on the second floor. Um, is he dead? Not yet. He takes a bow, an arrow out. Um, does he just let fly or? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. He's, just, he's just knocking it. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, uh, stop, stop, stop. Um, he, he lowers the weapon. 
there's not more combat happening, is there? Or I should say, I should say, is says, it, are they are they engaged at the moment? They used an earth elemental to drive the dark elves away. There were some creatures, I think they're imps, on the second floor attacking them. I think they may have gotten the stone. And where did they go? I don't know. Fine. Um, I'm uh, Naraya's going to say, I'm going to investigate the bard. Um, stand down unless you're attacked. You don't give me orders. Um, looking at, or I, I'll, I'll Is, double you, check you know on that, it. You know that Istrid yeah. and uh, another woman named Tashlin are the only ones he's accustomed to taking orders from. Very well. Um, I'll say uh, Istrid and Tashlin don't know this situation. I've, I've spoken with everyone in this house. And Diplomacy wins uh, the day. Say again? Diplomacy wins the day, he says disapprovingly. For now, I'll signal if we need anything. There's one Keep on the roof. Out. Watch for him. One what? One of them. You see the yeah, waving up on <laughs> Hello! <laughs> All right, uh... Clearly got that move from Strix. <laughs> All right. Um... I'll stand down. Uh, you get the stone. I'll do my best. And disappearing, I will I will reappear in the shadows, uh, hopefully in the darkened room where Paulton lay, lies. The last thing you hear is Raj say is the spell's running out anyway. Okay. Um, so... So who do I see in this in this top room? Can I make a perception? So where are you exactly? Going? So I'm I'm so you said that were, didn't you say that they were on the second floor? The, the yes. Floor? So and there's a balcony that you can climb up to to get up Perfect. there. Yeah, sure. I'll just use that. That's great. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so you pull yourself up there. You don't have to make a check. It's super easy. Great. Great. And the door is locked. <laughs> I mean unlocked. So. You just help people lock. Come on, guys! This is, this, <laughs> come on! I swear I lock them in. With... Do you not have like an alarm system installed? Like the gnomes have that. They'll call the police for you. Dude, um, this house is like missing its top floor. You think yeah. we have security? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Fine. Um, in uh, any case, she'll she'll see if she can make a make kind of take stock of the situation when she's up there. All right. Uh, yeah. When you get up into the second floor and into the house, you can make your way through Waffles Den into the common room. By the time you get there, you see a uh, the Black Viper with arrows sticking in her. You see Paulton huddled down over this young boy who looks like he might be dead or almost dead, and that's what you see first. You also see, see? a you see a staircase going down into the tap room. Um, seeing the dead boy, mm -hmm. uh, Narai will, without even thinking about it, um, not particularly loud, more to herself, but probably audible, say, no, or something like that. You hear Paulton just start, like, talking just coincidentally, like, children are dying in here! Whoever's <laughs> responsible for this ruckus is costing kids' lives! What kind of heartless garbage trash person would do this? <laughs> what do you do you that, hear, That's not, are you talking about me? No, no, you didn't kill any kids today. Oh, okay. Uh, technically also not me. Um, so. And or anyone remotely associated with what's going on. <laughs> As I'm Get spitting out. up blood, I'm like, definitely not me. <laughs> Don't mind me. Okay. Um, so I'll 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 look at uh, at um, I'll look at the, the the perceiving it as dead boy. When you go over and, and you look over Paulton's shoulder at the boy, you can see right away the boy is still alive. Oh, he's, breathing. he's not alive. He's dead. He's, he's breathing in a crush. But he looks really, really like he's been poisoned. He's been stung. Um, just he's in bad shape. Really bad shape. For an, for an eleven year old or whatever. He yep. Is. Yep. Um, that's questionable. Very well. <laughs> um, the last thing that I think, because my ten, my six seconds are probably up at yeah. this point. The last thing that she will say is, um, is, what happened to your poor boy? This, is, this wasn't the plan. 
Oh, that's being said to me? Yeah. Sure, yeah. He's like, he's just a poor boy. That's what I said. What happened to him? Nobody. God damn it. Nobody loves him. God damn it. I mean. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. You, you set up such a good shtick. Close the call. <laughs> right. Yeah, so these arrows... Wait, it was it the no? It was poison. no. It was the imps. No, it was the imp. Thank you. We are out of initiative. It was the imps. Yeah, we're out of initiative. Uh, oh. Are we out of initiative? Oh, okay. Um. In yeah, uh, the imps. Uh, what imps? While this conversation is going on, a black viper. You've still got two big arrows kind of lodged in your body. <laughs> Narai is careful not to acknowledge the arrows. <laughs> It was just these imps, and they, they reached for my crotch, and then there was poison in me, and then oh, wow. I, I was, I, me and my son were dead, and then I wasn't dead, my son might still be dead. They, I, they, there's no one, no one can help him. Someone help him, the poor boy who's dying. So right he's dying, death. or he's, because you said he was not yeah. I didn't, right I didn't go to medical school. I don't get a good read on, on it. Anybody, can, we were all dying. anybody can do whatever they want now. Evelyn right. comes in. <laughs> My son! Lay on hands. Okay. Clear! Do <laughs> you wish you were trying to slide into one of those hands? Just, <laughs> just like, stop, stop being so dramatic. This isn't for you. All right, so That's Evelyn, awesome. you, you tend to the boy how much healing you need to give Simon. I feel like as his mother, she would know how many hit points he has. He has five. She gives him five. Okay. It's like also for what it's worth, I'm down roughly what you could call eighty. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, <laughs> cradles his cheek for eighty. I feel like I'm just like the ghost that's behind, like. <laughs> Let me take the arrows out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like get your, come, come, So black black viper, it is it is it is dawned to you it is dawned on you that it's seeming increasingly unlikely that they don't have the stone anymore, which is unfortunate. Oh, I can't give you eighty actually, Nate. I can only give you. Uh, I guess if she notices Viper as she's doing lay on hands, mm -hmm. um, I'm very noticeable right now. So okay, she gives five to Simon. She's in the midst of giving what she thinks is going to be 50 to Paulton, but as Black Viper is kind of like tap, 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 she's like, oh, yes, of course. And she just gives 40 to Paulton and 10 to Black Viper. As long as these come out, that's. Mm -hmm. she, she's like, hold on just one second. Okay. Go! Ah! Oh, here, here, pat, 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 pat. Usually it's better to pull them out fletchings. Yeah. <laughs> by, by the, by the, by the. <laughs> Want the points At least she no. didn't push them um, through. So, so, um, so who is so? If okay. I, if I guess, if I see Zaraj kind of start to stand down. Yeah, a little bit. he does. Um, you also see his eyes go dark. Okay. Um, another quick survey of the area for any sign of the imps or the stone or anything like that, and failing, uh, I'll start make my way back down into the house. Got it. So you come down the stairs and you see everybody else present. Okay. Pretty much. Waffles, I feel like, has just now sat on Strix. Fair. So Strix is on the ground. You just hear like, please help. <laughs> really, she's really heavy, please. Please, please call the owl where. <laughs> Waffles, come here, honey. Come here, baby girl. <laughs> And I imagine she just like bounds off of yes. the street. like like yeah. when like a big dog also jumps off you and they kind of kick you on the way out. Yeah. So she's just mm -hmm. kicked. It's just like yeah. oh, okay. Uh, I still have the arrows in me, so I'm just gonna stand up and just like pull those out. Oh. Okay. And that was gross. And then uh, I'll put those in my panic room to keep for later. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I will just go rejoin the others. And kind of just be like, hey, so where's the stone? Indeed, where is the stone? Indeed, Paulton has it. Stone? Yeah, Paulton, wasn't it in your pants? Well, I, uh, there is a bit of a uh, a, 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 a a gap, a blank. A, uh, we don't need to know about in your pants. We just need to know where the stone gone. is. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. What? The stone, the stone, it's, they took it? You still, you still have the bag of holding that it was 
the bag that it was stuffed in, but it's it was removed. Yes, you discovered. It was in this bag, and then I died. <laughs> You're alive now. You weren't dead. Is that how this works? Yes. <laughs> You're alive now, so who cares? Cool. Very cool. You weren't dead. Nat saved you, and then I I helped. Like, gonna... All right. Well, it was in here. Can I just like? flip over the bag and just yeah. try to like empty out everything. Just like it was yeah. in here somewhere. Do like Jarlaxle's like leather outfits fall out of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is in the, what is in the if we're dumping out the purse, what's in the purse? That's the big question here. Yeah. It's like, uh -oh. yeah there's there's all kinds of wonderful costumes in there. Um wigs and uh, <laughs> sequined eye patches and yeah and i'm just like this is not anything that we know who's this was very clear yes will say that uh how martin basically saw all of it and then last i heard was a small window shatter an imp-sized hole well could hole. you strip here's, you locate that object i well, can here's I can try and locate the magical object, but here's the deal. We know who has it. Those imps work for the castle lanterns. So they took it. We know they took it. And all we have to do is go take it back from them. Sounds like now, a great plan. Wait, okay. Uh, this, th this whole thing, I like point to like the non party. It's like this whole thing <laughs> this, that sounds like a word, word, like. Can can the Viper and Narai share like a look to each other? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? What? You cannot. We're how you're talking in front of us. Oh yeah. Thank yeah. you. Can you like Thank go? You. Can you leave? Can you leave us? You know what? Actually, just give us one minute, and I'm gonna cast oh, a fifth level banishment on both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Wow. So let's make ourselves wow. some saving throws. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Viper. Literally, just give us a minute. <laughs> I love how yeah. Viper keeps showing up like, what? Why? Come on. I feel like I walked we, in and I've been getting attacked. Like, that's <laughs> the worst, worst part is that I feel like we never, like, really ask Viper what's going on. Right, right? <laughs> she, she, has, she has a story to tell, but you're never going to hear it. don't ask. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, charisma saving throws, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, that's actually not bad. Uh, what does a 15 get me? Banish. <laughs> Banished? Banished. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, what does a seven get me? <laughs> Super banished. Can so, we go to the same plane though? Okay. So you, you <laughs> Can we dish? They, they, they are dismissed from your presence, leaving the Waffle Crew alone. All right, good. We only have a minute. We need to figure out what's going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll keep uh, time. I don't think this is how we keep people coming back to the bakery, but we can have this discussion later. Um, <laughs> also, I broke I, another floor. Sorry. I, it's it, it does, I still hear like the earth elemental like smashing things. <laughs> Look, the cast lanterns took it if they're imps. It, the, the best part about it is like they're in they're in some cahoots with uh, Asmodeus. So all we do is you just send me, they can't hurt me. I just go over there and I say, you give it back to me. Your dad told you to give it to me. I'm assuming that Asmodeus is their dad. If possible, it's better if we are able to get that stone before they even retrieve it. Right. Yeah. The best option we could do is that we get the information on where this horde is so that no one else even knows where to look for it. Oh, you mean if we just go to the, but but you didn't attune to the stone so it couldn't tell you. I haven't had time. Mm, so we have to find these imps. I guess I can do, I can, I can detect magic, but I don't think that it's gonna be far enough, but I can try. I don't know how far that'll go. More importantly, we need to figure out why these two are even here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair, is but they're gone. Important, though? Uh, it's important, though. I'm trying to figure out what is actually the most important here. I'm I'm a little, no. I mean, I know Lathander's the most important, but aside from that, I'm just not sure what the most important thing is right now. It is important, though. That They're just kind of like where we sit in with us right now. It's just like we're, who, no one, no I one. I just feel right. like, is it such a bad thing for the Castle Lanterns to have that rock because our house is falling down? The Did whole they? point was that we have to get the gold for the dwarves, right? Yes. Why? That's the point. Because I need to. Oh, right. Well, I mean, oh, Paulton and I have 50,000 gold if you need some. That's not enough. What? Whew. It's not enough. <laughs> it's a minute in D&D time. This <laughs> can take it's, it's not enough. Well, but 
So we just need to go find the stone. So we go to the castle lanterns and we go and ask lanterns, lanterns. I don't care. Let's just go tell them or take it from them or I don't know. They're clearly evil. And the moment we take it from them, we got another enemy upon us. So what do we do? I I don't. Leave? We leave. We leave water deep. We leave. You know what? Let's just leave the plane. Plane shift. We can go wherever we want. Weren't we supposed to be the castle lanterns allies? That's what they wanted us to be, but the last thing we're going to do is do anything for a bunch of devil worshippers. Oh, so we lied to them? I... I mean... I, no, I mean... See, th the thing is, Diab, like, I like to stick to a plan, and I like to, like, help, but I feel like I keep trying to stick to our plan, and I don't feel like I know what it is anymore. Like, I was trying to wear my disguise, and, and I was waiting for man shoon to show up and then that never happened and now all the kids almost died and now we're talking about turning on an ally and i just really don't feel like i know what direction you're leading in can you help me understand i don't i don't i i don't know i've i all right I, well I, aren't you but aren't, aren't you the leader yes but I, I know i've just i all of this this has all been for my own selfish re reasoning, and I've wrapped you all up into it and got you all hurt because of that. I don't think it's selfish. I mean, you're just, it's, it was an accident. It's not selfish for that. Look, and here's the deal. We trust you and we'll follow you, but you got to take a step in some direction because I feel like I'm spinning. I, uh, I feel like I am spinning too much and now I want to throw up. Is that the same? No. Yes. <laughs> Paul, like, but, puts a hand on Dia's shoulder. Like, look, no, listen. Honestly. Listen. Look, look, look. <laughs> She's right. We need a plan of action. We need an actual direction to take. And you, you've been freezing, man. It's been a lot of freezing. And I know it's hard. And I know that it's, it's, very, it's so personalized what we need to do for you. But we're going to do it. We'll help you. Just we need to know what you need us to do. You know, you're my best friend and I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you hurt. Dieth just kind of in response to that, just kind of ends up sitting down and putting his like head into his hands. And as doesn't have an immediate response, but you can oh kind of, he didn't say no, we're best friends now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's kind of like, you hear him like kind of taking deep breaths to himself and and, and the gears are turning. So, you know, as soon as you're ready to tell us what to do while the imps are flying <laughs> away with the stone. <laughs> uh, I don't know if what to say. Strix, you have your broom. Evelyn, you can also fly. Yeah. Between the two of you, you can look at the object. If you're able to get that in midair before it returns to them, we need to do it now. That might be our last chance. If we can't make it there, then we plan for the Castle Lanterns. All right, During great that, plan. Let's go. During that, Paulton, you and me, those two are going to be back any second now. We need to be ready to talk to them. Cool. So don't right. instantly banish them when they come back. Got it. It's... All right, let's go. Evelyn can grabs I, Can I get a high five Woo! from Evelyn? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. All right. Paulton so just to make it like a group high five. <laughs> yeah. Kind of misses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Team. So, Evelyn and Strix leave. Mm -hmm. Evelyn puts a hole in the ceiling and Strix just follows her out. <laughs> okay. Sure, why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. At this point, it's all important demo. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So as the as the as the radiant charred flinders rain down upon you and Paulton Diath, you wait, and then the banishment spells end, and your two guests return. Banishment didn't. Banishment and didn't. Banishment didn't. <laughs> ah, good, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Narai has a cryptic smile on her face and says, yes, indeed, I was worried. I'm always Thank worried. Thank you so much for giving us this wonderful time together. Private what? time. What? Wonderful private time. What are you doing here, both of you? Wait, y'all do it while you're banished? <laughs> no. Can you do that in that dimension? I've never been. No. What was it like? Is it like a like a hotel room or is it like some kind of dimension of like 
like well, if, I don't know. I just send Starbucks. people there. You put us in a Starbucks. Oh man, it was nice. Should have told you to grab me something. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh, anyway, yes. What are you I doing get here? all the way through your order. Um, uh, we're fine. As a matter of fact, she says, nodding to Black Viper. Do you think we should take our leave? It really seems like all of you have this under control, I say, as I look at the house completely <laughs> on fire, like, around me. And noticing all of the kids still staring at me. And I feel like maybe I'm not as welcomed here as I once, I never was. I don't trust this. Just just pause for a second. I'm gonna do another banishment. <laughs> God, make a... Okay. Sure. Really? All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this. I need more time to react. This is such a later problem. For you me. know what? I honestly, I'm like thinking about deliberately failing this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got a, this is a charisma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 18. That's good enough. Yeah, I yeah, also I... rolled an 18, actually. Your spell? Well, the saves 20. Oh, the saves 20. That's right. I forgot, because your hand, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah, so disappear, you go. Oof. It's like, right. okay. okay. so Let's after I disappear, I'm like, wait, that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, they were way too confident when coming back. They're up to something. What do we do? At what point? I, <laughs> <laughs> I show up. I'm attacked. I try to leave. I'm banished. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Something's off. At no point did we ever know anything about Sister Jeremiah and Lady Espoy, sorry, Black Viper, ever working together. When did this come about? I don't know. I I was, uh, again, uh, dead. So. I meant far earlier than this, but yeah. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. We'll be back in 44 seconds. Okay, cool. All right, so how do we how do we question them? Them? How do we interrogate? This is what we know. We know that Sister Nerai works for the Zentarum, at least a faction of the Zentarum. Lee Espale was on her own trying to obtain the stone, which means if the Black Viper is here talking to Lady to Sister Nerai, at some point the two of them were trying to get the stone for Lady Espale. Thirty seconds. Which, if that's the case, Sister Nerai claiming that it was for the dwarves, unless. Unless Espale is also doing it for the doors, I highly doubt that being the case. I could just uh, suggest that they, you know, tell us what they're really up to or we kill them. I, not gonna, I don't want to kill anyone. I, I didn't say we're gonna. I'm just saying I'll just tell them. 15 seconds. <sighs> so let's just, let's, just, let's just talk to them. Let's just persuade them. All right. We need to know... We know why they're here. It's for the stone. More importantly, we need to know why they're working together and ultimately who for. They revere. Right, cool. <laughs> hey, y'all. Did you give me a latte? I'm so sorry about that. Um, Narai, latte in hand. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll offer it to, uh, to, to Paulton and then retract it before he can snatch it, taking a deep swig oh. and saying, just kidding, this one's mine. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, doesn't matter. We have some questions for you guys, if you don't mind. Um, what y'all what, what up to? What, why are you, why you working together? Why do you, why, why are you- Working why are you... together. Literally never spoke to her until you banished us. I've literally never seen her before in my life until I saw her standing over that dead body. Hmm. So, well, standing then, over next to, not in connection to. Standing me. near a dead body. Uh, Important clarification. Okay, then how about this? Between the two of you, what are you doing for Lady Espelay? I think Lady Espelay is absolutely magnanimous and wonderful. <laughs> and an absolute wonderful darling. I would do anything for her. Does Narai know? Uh, does Narai know who Espelay no. is? No. No. Okay, great. I have no idea who that is. Good talk. We do we have do we have anything else? Um. I, I lean over. No. I wasn't asking you. Look, I know why both of you are here. Perhaps for your own agendas, then, but. 
It's not here. We can't help you. You're Apparently. Looking the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, Narai is going to briefly, uh, survey the room <laughs> and, uh, and say, well, uh, seeing as there's not much left to say, I'm glad that you're, uh, that the children that you're keeping in this war zone are still safe and well. Um, I think that I'll take my leave. I, uh, I lean over and kind of brush myself and all of my blood off a bit. And uh, I take a couple steps, lean over and pick up that that uh, pipe that I had tossed mm -hmm. over my shoulder before. Yeah. I pick it up and turn around and toss it to one of the kids and be like, here, you drop this. And start grumbling and, you know what? No, I don't walk down the stairs. I parkour down those stairs. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, the rival will, will step into the shadows and disappear. And as right. they're leaving, Dia's last message to them will just be like, try as you might. That money does not belong to you. I, I turn around right before leaving and slamming the door. Oh, be sure. You will see me again. We are not through here. And also, hey, call me. And then I just slam the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... What? Oh, Wait. I don't... What? Mm, I don't what know. happens in extra dimensional spaces stays in extra dimensional mm -hmm. space. <laughs> <laughs> Man, everyone, just everyone with everyone on this show. Damn. We so, can leave uh, it ambiguous. It can be ambiguous. Yeah, we, we, uh, do we need, is that fine that they're gone, that they're leaving? Not that it matters because they left. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Let them cool. Leave. Does it feel like, like the scene should probably like cut at this point or something? Paulton, what are you even talking? The scene cuts. <laughs> <laughs> are we flying around looking for the stone? No, I'm just sort of l lingering on this scene of <laughs> Diath and Paulton <laughs> standing in the room, waiting for it all to end. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's and like it, the police um, it's like police squad where they did uh, like the freeze uh, yeah. frame but everything's still happening like, <laughs> and freezing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, squidly up. walks by with an apple like it's just <laughs> <laughs> and it just never ends but that is where yeah. we'll stop if I had slammed the door but I'm still on the other side of it and I'm like they're, they're really not even <laughs> who are they talking to exactly cut and cut and some bastard and I leave all right, uh, so we are done for now, and uh, just very quick announcements. Uh, I am out of town next week. There's a thing called PAX East happening next week. Oh. And also, um, we've actually got two DCA games next week. Holly is going to DM the Chicken Foot Coven on our regular Tuesday slot at 4 Yay. p.m. And then the Waffle Crew is going to convene at PAX East on Thursday. It's a night game on the East Coast to mm, with yes. DM Kate Welch for an all new episode of DCA. So double Doing chores for grandma. So chicken foot coven on the regular Tuesday slot and then PAX East Thursday night. And you can watch we are uh, you can watch it on the the PAX Twitch channel. We're also hosting it on our twitch.tv slash DD channel. Nice. So watch it there. Also, if you're going to PAX East, we will have all of our merch there along with a couple new items. Also, we'll be having a panel and a signing and we'll be appearing at the Idol Champions booth. So stay tuned to all of our social media so you can find those schedules as we approach PAX. And you can also find those schedules and where they'll be streamed and where they will be held on the PAX East website. If you just Google PAX East and then on the schedule, search DICE, all of the DICE camera action stuff will come up. Also, um... I have an announcement for Idle Champions. If you're playing Idle Champions this week, you can get Rosie B. Stinger. And there's a special Festival of Fools event where she has lots of um, in-character canonical dialogue of <laughs> Strix and Rosie talking. And it's very funny. So make sure to check that out. Um, it's very enjoyable. And I'll be streaming with them a couple times this week. So it's going to be fun. And speaking of yeah. Idle Champions, we have a Black Viper Idle Champion. Ooh, yes, around. true. That's me. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I think she debuted earlier this month um, for Fleet Week. But yeah, uh, 
Black Vipers on there too. And it was really super fun and awesome because I got to help and design it and make all the flavor text and everything. It's very cool. Idol Champions, you are the best. Ding! And before we run out of time, I just want to say thank you, Vivka. Thank you, Brooks, for joining us again this week for a spectacular Yay! episode. You guys Never are great. Never a pleasure. And we're, we're, awesome. we're lucky to have you. Oh, oh Chris, we'll let you know all the things that we have talked about <laughs> privately. You, I want you so to. Much hot gods. Yes, I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will expect great uh, entangled intrigue. We, we were literally <laughs> spilling the tea in there. Nice. I mean, you gave us so many long minutes in that Starbucks that we yeah. were able to really discuss in depth some plans. Indeed. Can't wait. Cool. All right. All right. Then that's I'm it for a, this week. I'm, I'm a spam a link. Oh, please do. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> last thing. I actually, it. I was thinking about hopping up on the DCA page, and since we are, or DCA, or subreddit, since we already talked about uh, about who Brooks Donahue is, I was going to put up a little thing and talk about maybe, like, some of Perkins' techniques that we like or some things we like here that we have engaged in our own games. And I know that I definitely have learned a couple things from my time here uh, with, with y'all that I've put in my with my own DMing, so I just wanted to kind of maybe have a discussion about that if anybody's down. On that subreddit. Join yes, on the subreddit. More. I'll put up a little, subreddit. a little thing arena. There we are. Which has just been spammed. All right. Nice. He done spammed it twice. Then let's Bam. let's let's, let's tune the hell out for the week. And uh, everybody take care of each other and take care of yourselves. And we'll see you for a double dose of dice camera action next week. Until then, take care, folks. Bye, friendos. Bye-bye. All right. And